Well, those, those of you who were in court today um, saw why I like it a lot better when this guy is on my side as opposed to against me. Uh, we had a very thoughtful uh, hearing. We appreciate the court's attention to this issue. Uh, we appreciate the preparation of all the justices. Uh, there were a number of thoughtful and tough questions to both sides. Uh, it's now uh, in the hands of the Supreme Court. Uh, it's been a long journey here for the last three and a half years, and I think we're all greatly encouraged that we are within a few months of a final decision on this, this terribly important case. I think the most remarkable thing that happened in there was that there was no attempt to defend the ban on gay and lesbian marriage. Um, there was no indication of any harm. All that was said in there was that this important constitutional right ought to be decided at the state level as opposed to the government. But it is a federal constitution that we have, and it is a federal constitution that guarantees fundamental rights to every citizen in every state. And so when we are now down simply to the question of how do you establish marriage equality, I think you can see how far we've come in the last few years. You're going to hear in a moment from Chris and Sandy and Jeff and Paul who have been at the beginning of this case right up to now. They are the people about whom this case is, uh, for whom this case is about. They and others like them in California and throughout the United States. Their right to be treated with respect and dignity and equality under the law in California and throughout the United States. I think one of the most important things that happened today was the fact that the American people were listening to the argument. And as David was saying, the other side, no one really offered a defense for the, the awful discrimination that takes place when gay and lesbian citizens are not denied the right given to everyone else to have the, their family relationship recognized and respected equally. Now, everybody, uh, starting later this afternoon, people are going to be able to listen to these arguments and decide for themselves. We are confident where the American people are going with this. We don't know for sure what the United States Supreme Court is going to do, but we're very, very gratified that they listened, they heard, they asked hard questions, and there's no denying where the right is, and we hope that the Supreme Court will come out in that way when they make this decision in June. Now, now I want you to... Can I ask you, though? Based on the questions, if you face the cameras too, based on the questions, do you feel confident, though, that the court is ready to make a sweeping ruling in this case? Based upon the questions that the justices asked, I have no idea. <laughs> well, well, the, the court has several ways to decide this case um, from a very broad, sweeping uh, conclusion with respect to the rights of our citizens in this country to a narrower ruling that would be limited basically to California. The court never gives you an idea how they're going to decide it. They didn't today. They've obviously read the briefs. They care about the issues. Uh, and then we'll see what the court decides. We'll answer, so David and I will answer some more questions. But I want everyone to hear from the individuals about for whom this case is about, the real people, Sandy and Chris, and Jeff and Paul, who have been just everyone's hero right from the beginning of this case. And we're just in love with them, and we're so hum humbled by the fact that we get to speak for them in the United States Supreme Court. You want to go first? Say your name. Uh, I'm Chris Perry, plaintiff in the case just heard in the Supreme Court. In this country, as children, we learn that there is a founding principle that all men and women are created equal. And we want this equality because this is a founding principle. Unfortunately, with the passage of Proposition 8, we learned that there are a group of people in California who are not being treated equally. And that was recognized by a federal court and the Ninth Circuit Court. We look forward to a day when Proposition 8 is finally and officially eliminated and equality is restored to the state of California. Hi, I'm Sandy Steer, and I, like all Americans, I believe in equality. I also believe in, in our judicial system, and I have great faith in it. But more than anything, I believe in love. And Proposition 8 
It's a discriminatory law that hurts people. It hurts gays and lesbians in California, and it hurts the chasing, and it does so for no good reason. It is our hope that we can move forward and remove this harm from society so that gays and lesbians in California can go back to their lives living equally alongside their neighbors with the same rights and protections as everyone else. Thank you all very much. Hi, my name is Paul Katami, and um, for me, from the beginning, this case has been about securing the right to marry the person that I love and also having the equal access to the most important relationship that I know in life, and that's marriage. So I simply look forward to the day where I can be married to the person I love and start a family like Chris and Sandy have. It's as simple as that. It's our constitutional right, and I cannot wait to start my family with Jeff. Hello, I'm Jeff Cirillo. We are so pleased to have had this opportunity to present our case to the United States Supreme Court today. It's been the culmination of a long and amazing journey. And we are so thankful for Ted Olson and David Boyce. We are really looking forward to the court's decision. Thank you. Now, Sandy and I would like to introduce you to our sons, two of our sons, Spencer and Elliot Perry. Go ahead. Uh, hello, my name is Spencer Perry. This is my twin brother, Elliot Perry, and um, uh, we're two of Chris and Sandy's very, very proud sons. On behalf of myself and my twin brother, I just want to say how incredibly proud we are of our parents. We love them, we love our family, and we look forward to the day when we will be treated equally, just like our neighbors' families. Thank you so much.